Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, the founder of Clarinet Mentors. My job here is to help you play the clarinet more easily. And I have lots of videos here designed with all sorts of practical tips and tools that I've learned in the last 30 years of playing and teaching professionally. And I hope they help you out. Today's video, I'm calling High Notes 101 Part 3. I find high notes is often something that gives people trouble and there's some easy pointers and tips to really make them work better for you. So part one was an introduction to the high register. If you're fairly new to high notes and you haven't seen that video, please watch it. Part two were some pointers specifically aimed at our extreme high notes, the altissimo, and an exercise on helping your mouth know what to do. So here in part three, I want to talk a little bit about what we should be doing inside of our mouth. It's called the voicing and how that affects the altissimo notes. And I'll show you some little fingering tricks that might also help your extreme high notes. When we play clarinet, um, we often focus on our tongue when we're tonguing. And in fact, I have some great videos here on YouTube specifically related to tonguing. But sometimes we don't think about our tongue when we're slurring or when we're just sustaining a long note. But it's in our mouth and it definitely affects how we play. All right, just for a minute, I'm gonna draw your attention to this little picture here. This is you playing the clarinet. Sorry, I probably didn't make you look as beautiful as you normally look, but nonetheless, this is you. Let's assume that you're doing a fantastic job of using your blowing muscles and your lungs somewhere down here in your body are pumping out the air with great speed and it's coming up your windpipe, um, which is about the diameter of a quarter, with great speed. Well, in between your windpipe and your clarinet, we have this big space. Look at this x-ray of your head. That big space is your mouth. In your mouth is your tongue and what your tongue does really affects our tone and our sound on the clarinet. What your tongue likes to do is hang out on the bottom of your mouth, down here. If it is down there, what happens is that this fast moving air that you're pumping out of your lungs hits this big space in your mouth and it slows down. Same, the same way a river will slow down when it hits the ocean. And that causes the air into our instrument to be slower than is ideal to support our high notes. When our tongue is low, you're gonna find your high register sounds flat, sounds squawky, the notes don't come out so easily. So what we wanna train our tongue to do is to make a bridge. And that's to have it sit up high so the air whooshes up our windpipe over the bridge of our tongue and into our clarinet with great speed. That's what really affects our tone. And I have some other videos on YouTube that illustrate that. A really sensitive note is our high C, our thumb and register key. And if I were to uh, play that high C and have my tongue go from a high position, which is where it likes to sit when I say the word he, into a middle position, hey, to a low position where it normally likes to hang out and relax, to ha, listen to what happens to my tone. That was me going he, big difference. So uh, probably when you're first exploring the high register, if you're getting that loud, squawky, flat sound, that would be something to think about, having your tongue move higher. And that's true from our lowest note on clarinet, certainly up to high C, and maybe around high D and E. Now, we, we call this position of our tongue and what our mouth is shaped like inside the voicing of the instrument. When we go into the extreme high notes, so let's say, around high E flat, around high E and up, we actually do change the voicing a little bit. So again, just like in High Notes 101 Part 2, we talked about how we change our embouchure a little bit, we change the inside of our mouth too. And this is very subtle and you need to experiment with it a bit, but I find if I'm playing a higher note, instead of he, I'm thinking more of a hue position. And that seems to free up those notes and make them work more easily. So let's say I'm playing an altissimo high G. There's many, many fingerings for it. For today, I'll use a commonly accepted good one, which is thumb register key, middle finger, first finger, second finger, and this little E flat key, which we use on most of those altissimo notes. Um, there's not a huge difference between he and hue, but a little bit. So here's he, and sometimes we tend to sound a bit pinched. 
sounds like it's squeezing out a little bit. It's not bad. However, if I really get my corners in and think more hue, it pops out really easily. And it feels to me as a player like, wow, that just came out effortlessly. That's a small change that we want to make. So generally speaking with voicing, anywhere in what we call the clarion register, which are the notes where we first have our register key up to high C, we want our tongue as high as we can, and we want to pretend like we're saying he while we play. Great way to practice that is set a tuner in front of you and play that high C. If your tongue is low, you're usually going to see the tuner dipping flat. If it's in tune, you're going to see it probably means your tongue is in the right position. Above that, again, it's just experimenting. So watch my High Notes 101 Part 2, but where I talked about bringing the corners of the mouth in, that almost automatically helps you lower your tongue into a who, and that's going to help your high, high notes to sound better. Now, one other trick that I really like to use in the Altissimo register that I'll share with you, common technique many people use, it's what we do with our top finger. When you look at most fingering charts, they'll recommend that you, of course, have that hole uncovered when you play. The challenge I find with that is, especially if we're slurring to an altissimo note from the high end of the clarion register, is that when we pop that finger off, the air pressure change is really noticeable. All of a sudden, the instrument's resistance changes quite a bit. And that causes our air often to hitch or catch or not be so smooth. There is a technique that really helps us to even that out. And it's instead of lifting this top finger off, it's called the half hole technique. We slide it down. Now, if I cover too much of this hole, then I'm actually not going to pop to the high register at all. So even though it's called half hole, when I do it, I slide my finger down until it hits the key below it. I'm probably only covering about a third of the hole. That action evens out the air pressure difference and it really helps me to make those slurs feel smoother and more natural. Here's what I would like you to try. How about your high B, thumb and register key, um, to a high D? And you can do it by popping that finger off, which is probably how you're accustomed to doing it. Now, I can do that and, and many people can control that fairly well. However, if instead of popping that top finger off, I slide it down, to me, the two notes feel much more matched. It's almost like I'm just going from B to C, which is a fairly easy slur. Now, it's a little trickier to slur back down because this finger's not used to sliding up onto that hole. That does take a little bit of practice. Nonetheless, when we get used to it, it can make those notes feel much easier to play. And if I have to hit an altissimo note um, kind of by itself, start a phrase up there, I find partially covering that hole gives me enough extra resistance that it's easier to come in very soft. If I had to start a piece on a high E really softly, it's very easy for me to do that if that hole is partially covered. I can do it with the hole open, but it's more work. And I'm all about making it easier for you and for me and for all of my students. So that half hole technique definitely is going to feel odd and uncomfortable to your fingers. But once you learn it, it's a really nice addition to your fingering tricks in the high register. And it'll make those altissimo notes smoother, easier to play. Generally, I recommend using it most of the time. Some people use it occasionally. Some people use it all the time. I tend to use it most of the time just because I like how it makes the notes feel. So that's my High Notes 101 Part 3. I would love to hear from you. There's a comments box underneath this video. If you have any questions about this or just comments, please add them in. I go through there about once a week and I write my responses in there to you. And I also invite you to become a member of the Clarinet Mentors community if you're not already part of the gang. All you need to do is go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and sign up. It's totally free, no charge to you. And if you join the Clarinet Mentors community, I send out a newsletter about every two weeks and it always has a video like today's that's designed to help you play clarinet more easily. I also throw in some of my recommendations on really good clarinet um, equipment that I've run across that I want to share with you. It's very easy to join. It's very easy to unjoin if it turns out to be not a good fit. 
So I welcome you to consider that. And I thank you for watching today's video. I look forward to hearing your comments. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.